Hello, my name is Frederik Steinmetz for BlenderDiplom.com and in this chapter I'd like to talk about the decimate modifier and the reason I'm bringing you an updated version of the decimate modifier is that since Blender 2.7 there have been a couple of new options. Let's just add it to this cube and just to show you I have heavily subdivided this cube eight times because there is an option unsubdivide. The unsubdivide has only one option, iteration, and also it has a very handy face count. So let's have a look at what happens if I put the iterations up to one. The important thing that happens is the face count halves, and the weird thing that happens is we get a couple of these weird triangle-like shapes. They are not triangles. This is just the way the algorithm of the decimate modifier works, but don't worry. As long as you use even numbers here, your decimation will not look that bad. And you can see once I'm going close to the 8, you can see that this cube is getting less and less subdivided. And let's see what happens if I hit the 8. You can see face count is down to 6. And if I press apply, I have a perfectly normal cube. Now this is basically the most simple example you can have for a subdivision. So let's have a look at this one. This is a cube that I subdivided smooth several times. Let's see how the decimate modifier copes with a more rounded structure. You can see again, this is working quite nicely. So even if the structure is a bit rounded, you can see the iterations work fine. So let's just imagine you have imported a model from some side and some of the structures are too much subdivided. You can just try and unsubdivide them, see if you can reduce the face count, and thereby using your own, let's say, subsurf modifier in order to get the smoothest that you want. Okay, let's go over to the planar settings. You get four options and an angle limit. Right now, nothing's happening. And the reason for that is we don't have any two adjacent faces that form an angle less than five degrees. So if I want this modifier to, let's say, call it kick in, I need to increase the angle limit because nothing below this angle limit will get collapsed. Let's just increase this so until we see the results very strongly. And you can see I have given this sphere three materials just so we can see a little bit better how the decimate modifier treats the surface and also I have a seam here. You can see that as a vertical seam along the sphere. And let's have a look at the all boundaries. I'm not entirely sure what the all boundaries does. The Blender Wiki did not specify that. But you can see two things happening when I check this button. First of all, the mesh geometry is a little less jagged, so it's a little less deformed. And also the outline smoothens out, or let's say it's more regular. So what the way I interpret this check mark here is that Blender tries to take the newly created vertices from the collapsed faces to be inside the boundaries of the old faces. So please correct me if I'm wrong there, but at this point I just advise you check this button, see if the result pleases you more, and if not, uncheck it again. So let's have a look at the delimit options. Delimiting the material means Blender will respect the material border. It won't collapse two faces adjacent to each other if they don't share the same material thereby keeping these lines here straight, which is a great addition because you can imagine that this might come in handy at several times. If you hold shift, you can select more of them or deselect them. So I just deselected the material in order to show you the seam. The seam also shows you that, remember, there's a seam vertically along the sphere. And the reason why I divided these two parts you can see, of course, since it's along the seam, 
the border between those two materials is still straight, but the yellow material overall has been more distributed along the cube. And one of the great things about the delimiting the seam is if you apply the modifier, you can see it actually respected your seam. So you can actually decimate a model without losing its UV geometry. Now that was absolutely impossible before this updated option. So that's a great addition to the decimate modifier. Now let's get to the delimit normals. I have tried a lot of things. I have tried very wide normals. I've tried very steep angles and nothing really seemed to do anything with the normals. And again, the Blender Wiki doesn't tell you. So the only way I found to make this option here do anything was if I take a couple of these faces, hit Control F to flip the normals. And if I then check or uncheck normals, you can see there's a difference. I don't know why somebody would flip normals, but maybe there is a way to give it a similar guide like the seam would or the material would. I honestly am not sure. One thing to note about this is if I duplicate this, this says the face count is down to 13 and of course this UV sphere here has no end gones. But if I apply the modifier, we can see those 13 faces are actually end gones and if you convert them into triangles, you're actually up to 140. So that a measurement is not very accurate since n-gons can consist of a lot of faces. So don't give too much on this face count once you're getting n-gons like that one. Okay, let's have a look at the last one and probably the most commonly used. I'll check my reptile here. And again, the decimate modifier and the collapse. If I decrease the ratio, which might be kind of weird, you decrease the ratio and the result of the modifier gets stronger. But this is basically the ratio of faces. So if I decrease that, you can see in the topology that a lot of the faces disappear and get merged or collapsed. You can see, I, if you imagine there being a normal map on top of that, I can go pretty deep and now I have reduced the faces from 3038 down to 660 and still I can tell the overall shape of my model. Even the fingers and so on still work. So this modifier has been also become more smart. And you can check triangulate and this is just a tool because some of the other programs other than Blender don't allow quads like real flow or some of the game engines. They want triangulated meshes. And since you'd probably use the decimate modifier in order to export your object a lot. So there's just a triangulate button which will convert your quads into triangles just like the triangulate modifier would, but you know, as one less modifier you have to add. So the last option we can discuss is the vertex group. You can see there are no vertex groups on this mesh. So let's create one. I want to create one for the tail. So I'll just uh, press plus here and choose a sign. Let's choose a weight of one so we can see the effect better. And if I use a vertex group, you can see the group de gets decimated a lot. It does not get decimated along its axis because here we have too many vertices. You know, all the quads here get collapsed to one single triangle, but we can't collapse the bases because we're not collapsing these faces. And this is why even though we're heavily decimating the tail, we can't decimate it along the tail because of the remaining vertices that are not inside the group. 
I can also invert the group. And then you can see my lizard here is getting decimated while the tail stays its original shape. And this can be very handy, especially in situations where you have some more fragile structures of a mesh that you don't want to be destroyed by the modifier. And this is not an absolute value. You can check if I say half this sign, go back to the modifier, you can now see it infects the tail, but it affects it only half as much as if I wasn't using the group. So you could actually go ahead and paint your models. You would probably try and get the fingers and other parts of your model to be less decimated. So you can just paint them over with the vertex group so you can have very fine control on which part of the model the modifier will actually decimate. That's it about the decimate modifier. Thank you for watching.